Welcome to the DJ Force X podcast, episode 25. Now, before I go any further, I have a special announcement coming up right now. This episode of the DJ Force X podcast is proudly sponsored by Fixed. Fixed is a fan and artist-friendly independent record label that specializes in hybrid electronic rock. It's home to the likes of Cell Dweller, Blue Starly, I Will Never Be The Same, Witchy Nicks, The Algorithm, Voicians, CD Akira, and a whole bunch more. Check out their latest label sampler for just one dollar at their official store, FixedStore.com. That's F-I-X-T store.com. Save 10% off your first order by using my coupon code FORCEX. That's F-O-R-C-E-X. They have loads of shirts, hoodies, stickers, posters, and many other accessories for all their artists. And this is available worldwide with fantastic international shipping rates to go with that. So head over to fixstore.com and check them out. And don't forget, use my coupon code FORCEX. So there we have it. I have my first official sponsor of the DJ Force X podcast, and it is fixed. Ironically, as well, I have the co-founder of Fixed on this particular episode, but I thought, what a place to start it. So uh, thank you to them uh, for believing in my show and having that, um, what's the word, just having that niceness to sponsor my show, and I hope it helps them. And uh, I hope it helps me. Um, but yeah, I've had uh, their previous um, previous episodes. I've had their artists on. Cell Duella, Blue Starly, Richie Nicks. Go back, check them out if you're new to the show. Uh, there are a few episodes back. Um, and if you caught the spoiler in there, uh, there was a couple. But one got announced today. And that's the algorithm. Um, I've signed to Fixed. Uh, the algorithm previously with Basic Records. Um been around for a while now electronic artist with the metal metal side of it it's kind of genty in its form um but yeah check it out um and there's a new track new single called floating point uh it's currently up on the team rock stroke metal hammer website as an exclusive on there uh the album's called brute force and that's due out in april via fixed uh that'll be worldwide as well uh so yeah check it out maybe when it comes up pre-order use the discount code force x just dropping that in there but anyway if you caught the other spoiler that was in that advert if you were paying attention then you would have heard it uh it's made me very excited incredibly excited um i'll go i'll talk about more than that at the end of the episode but if you listen to the interview you'll hear it as well uh it's another new signing for them um and they've not announced it just yet so this show right here exclusive it's my first proper exclusive, I think. Uh, apart from the hint of maybe Cell Dweller, maybe touring. But I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, um, more on Fixed. Um, but yeah, uh, apart from that, I've been good. Uh, the previous episode, thank you to Jinx. Um, again, fantastic support for the episode. Plenty of, of activity on the download front or streaming front. I can tell looking at my statistics that things are going good. But I would ask you, please, if you do dig this show, um, if you could rate and review it, uh, just take five minutes, go on to iTunes, go on to Stitcher, whichever way, wherever you get this from, and write a little review. Leave, leave, leave a couple of stars, uh, five stars, please. Um, but this just helps the show. Um, it helps me get, uh, you know, bigger guests, uh, but it helps me promote these artists on here. Ones that, um, aren't as big as some of the, some of the bigger bands, but deserve it, I feel. Um, and cause some of these guests I've had on here are fantastic bands that just need a bit more exposure. And, and if they're fans who are listening, you guys, you guys who subscribe, download on a regular basis can just go on, like I say to iTunes, um, and leave a review of the show. Uh, tell me what you think. Be honest. You know, if it's one star, great. If it's five stars, great. Uh, as long as it's constructive. Um, you know, if it's on the negative side, as long as it's constructive, or even positive construction on that front. Um, where we could take it, what you feel could improve. Stuff like, you know, I'm, I'm open to advice. Or even if you just want to drop me an email. Info at DJ Force X. That comes directly to me. Um, and yeah, we'll go, we'll go through that. And uh, like I say, I reply to most people that send me emails. Um, 
you know you've got any tips helps whatever or if you love the show just let me know um but if you could leave a review on that that really does help honestly uh it's one of those things it gets me on the itunes charts and things like that uh where we can just get that little bit more exposure and uh yeah just it just invites the guests on it gives me just that impetus to go to the bigger lot and say look i get this i got these reviews da 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 it's a bit like being in a band and trying to find that label to be honest with you you know you get all the good reviews from the indie rock scenes and everything like that and then uh you go on the search of a label and say, look, I, we got all these reviews. And uh, yeah, they might sign you, they might not. But yeah, it works the same way, weirdly. And I'm rambling now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to this particular episode. It is James Rhodes, uh, one of the co-founders of Fixed Music, proud sponsors of the DJ Force X podcast. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to this week's show. Um, on this episode, I have James Rhodes. Uh, he is the co-founder of Fixed Music, uh, home of previous guests, um, Cell Dweller, Blue Starley, and Richie Nix. Hello, James. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no worries, man. No worries. My pleasure. So, uh, we'll just go straight into it. Fixed, it was formed 10 years ago this year. Is that correct? That is correct. I actually uh, was just thinking about that this morning. It is officially the 10-year anniversary of the company, so nice. been at this for a while. Yeah, cool. And you, you formed the label with Clayton, also known as Cell Dweller. Can you tell me how that collaboration came about? Yeah, there is a bit of a story about that, and I guess to properly set that up, I have to go back to how I met Clay, and it started back you know, when I was in probably middle school, going into high school listening to his previous band, Circle of Dust. Cool, and cool. I was just a fan of what he did and started following him. And when he switched from doing Circle of Dust and there was a, a whole mess of, he had signed to a record label, had a really bad deal, the label folded. He couldn't continue uh, as Circle of Dust. So he eventually formed Cell Dweller. And, uh, and I got a chance to meet him being a part of his street team. And... Started volunteering, getting to know him. Uh, he started uh, letting me do uh, a few official projects for him over time as, uh, as we built up some trust and relationship. And up to the point where his manager at the time in Los Angeles uh, offered to hire me to be a part of their official team in L.A. So I moved out there and started working for his management company. Cool. And then... Uh, decided, uh, my family, you know, we decided we weren't really fit for LA kind of from a small town in Iowa and we moved back home and Clay and I had been working together for a few years just on Cell Dweller and, uh, you know, I was helping him with his merchandise, with just any sort of publicity, marketing, email list, just anything that I could be involved with. And uh, when I moved back to Iowa, kind of had an opportunity to start something new and I knew I was going to have time. I wasn't sure what I was doing yet and kind of looked at all the systems we had built for Cell Dweller and decided, you know, we could really scale these and handle these same processes, selling online merchandise and knowing distribution and marketing for more artists. So we formed Fixed in 2006 yeah. and, uh, and you know, that's kind of where it came from. Cool. That's quite, it's quite a journey. I mean, how does it feel to like, Obviously, be a fan of someone and then end up working for them. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been an unbelievable journey. And, you know, this is what I'm passionate about. So it's it's a dream come true. And, you know, even when things get challenging business and, you know, I always come back to, man, I, you know, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. So I love doing what I do, but it's it's come full circle. I went from being, you know, a fan to working for him and then all the way to as of a few years ago now i'm managing him oh wow and uh and managing the company managing him for his artist career and we've just really built you know over the last decade um you know a lot of trust and and we've you know just working with each other every day and uh yeah it's really exciting cool so how does the workload um sort of bounce off you and, and clayton is, there, is it more he's just stays on the creative side of things? Yeah, 
he's definitely the creative force. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I, I stay pretty behind the scenes and, uh, you know, try to just make what his vision is happen and go execute on his vision. Um, but luckily it's not just the two of us anymore. Uh, for the first three years or so of the company, it really was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Um, but now we've got a team of about a dozen people. So I'm managing, uh, a company now and, uh, went from just being, you know, again, a fan doing this one-on-one -on -one with him to managing a whole company and, you know, had to really stretch myself and grow, but we've got, you know, a full-time marketing social media person. We've got a full-time warehouse store manager, uh, a content coordinator, uh, publicist, accounting, human resources. So we've really built a team out around ourselves yeah. and, uh, and yeah, it's really just about having that creative vision and then going out and executing it. Yeah, no, I was going to say you, you have like, grown over the years, um, but I didn't realize you had that many staff working for you. Yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, it's been a challenge and, you know, we've, we've grown quite a bit and, uh, you know, just trying to keep the wheels turning, we've had to be pretty creative in finding, you know, multiple revenue streams and, you know, in a, in an industry where a lot of artists and labels are struggling, you know, we've, we've been able to thrive. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, film TV licensing as well as music sales and streaming and merchandise and, uh, YouTube and, uh, Twitch streaming and having our music used in lots of new mediums that we can monetize. You came out of um, high school and was working as a street team. Were you lining up to do anything else? Like, what, what did you do prior to setting this up? Yeah, so I knew I wanted to be in the music industry. I was passionate about music. Uh, so I did go to a recording school called the Recording Workshop in uh, Chillicothe, Ohio. It was like a, a two-month-long, uh, maybe three months, uh, intensive, you know, classes all day long, uh, on-site training for engineering, recording, mixing. Um, and I picked up a lot of skills from that that I still use today, being able to, you know, help with A&R and uh, on the label side now and listening to production quality. And uh, because we also do so much in film TV licensing, that quality bar is really high. Uh, so I picked up a lot of skills from that, but at the time, you know, that's what I was going for, thinking I would end up in a studio setting, and that's you know, not where I ended up at all. I ended up on the business side. Um, but that's kind of where I, what I was going after. I did a couple of years of college, um, got my AA degree, then went and did the recording workshop, but then it was right about that same time I had the opportunity to get more involved with Clayton on the street team, and that turned into a job where... Uh, I started uh, getting paid to help him, and you know I was working some day jobs on the side uh, for the first couple of years as we built some things up slowly, and then eventually was able just to go full time. That's cool because you do pick up a lot of stuff from these these courses, not just you know the techniques and what you should be hearing, listening, doing, um, but you do pick up you know little bits of 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 like the PR side of things, the A and R side of things, and how how um well how how labels work with you as a sound engineer um it's 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 quite different as an artist but um picking up how you know how that business side works is is incredibly useful so absolutely and i i think it's also interesting just to look at even the side jobs that i had uh well they were full time at the time and i was doing the music stuff on the side really but um you know i worked at a hospital in a registration department and uh you know dealt with insurance and paperwork and, and business stuff there. But um, even some of the other jobs I've had that were totally unrelated to music, you know, looking back, like there were things you learned, principles and just, you know, just life and business principles that come back into play later. Uh, so I always think, you know, whatever you're in, whatever you're doing, even if it's not where you ultimately want to be, uh, you know, appreciate where you are and pick up the, the lessons that are in front of you that can help you later. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This is probably a really like open question, I suppose. You might know it being being there from day one. Um, how many releases have Fixed had? <laughs> uh, well, I could tell you just based on the catalog numbers that we use. We use a catalog number system uh, for each release we put out. But uh, whether it's a single or an EP, 
uh, or the CD version, and say we have a, the same album on vinyl, each each individual separate release gets its own catalog number. Yeah. And I think we're up to around uh, 185, 190 in the catalog numbers. So we put out a lot of individual pieces, mm. um, but currently we've got about seven or eight artists on the roster that are active. Uh, we've had another four or five in the past that have you know, maybe re- released a thing or two with us, but have moved on. Um, but we've really built more of a, a family environment at the label where we're looking to build long-term relationships with our artists. Um, and we've really seen that you know, be fruitful for the artists that have been with us for a little bit, where you know, I think there's this trend, especially in, in a lot of modern electronic music where artists will just go from label to label, releasing a single here, a single there. And they don't really build that solid foundation, um, working with the same people, the same team towards the, a unified goal. And so it's like, you know, taking a brick and go laying it, you know, a mile this way and taking another brick and going five miles in the other direction and laying it instead of building those bricks in one location and building a house out of it. Um, that's kind of our viewpoint on it. So we, we like long-term relationships with our artists mm-hmm. that we can really build, a, you know, a sustainable career for them. And our vision for our artists is that they can make a full-time living being a musician working with us. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Because like, like you say, a lot of people in that electronic side of things, they do jump, um, like jumping, releasing singles off random labels and seeing, I guess, seeing which one sticks. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I see that a lot because I get promos and from a lot of like dance artists. And then one minute I think they're with this company and then they're actually, I, I approach that company. They're no longer with that company anymore. And right. I move to another one and it and they've done it like I've I've then tracked it and they've done it three or four times since they've been with that original company. So yeah, I see that trend happening on that front. I'm not sure why. I think, yeah, I think there's probably a few uh interesting reasons and you know, there's pros and cons, I'm sure, to it. Um but we've we've taken a very intentional, strategic approach to you know, we want to work with artists for, you know, a career art where we're building and I mean that's really What the whole label has been founded on is, you know, what we've tried and tested and, you know, failed at certain moments, but then learned from and figured out working on Clayton's career with Circle of Dust and Cell Dweller and kind of where he's come from. Mm. So we have a lot of real experience and seeing the the long term investment and working together um, really pay off. And now we've got, you know, artists like Blue Stolly who came in and what it took Clayton, you know, 20 years to accomplish in his career, trying things, failing, getting better, trying it and building. We were able to take, you know, an artist like Lustali and just in a few years, get him to almost a similar level of success where he's making a sustainable full-time income for music. Mm. And, you know, that's kind of the methodology is we want artists to come in, take what we've learned and, you know, really be a support system for them to grow. Yeah, yeah, because you seem to have the like what what would be perceived as a modern way of doing it, the more social media side of things. Between your artists, you have that pretty pretty well sewn up. I went, you know, um, with the way that say Sail Dweller releases material uh, periodically. Um, same with Blue Starly, in fact, like with the yeah. anti sleeps and things like that. Just having that regular output that right. people can keep coming back for more, but having that and having that a, a presence on on the various social medias as well. You know, communicating with the fan, which a lot of labels don't do and a lot of artists tend not to do these days. Right. And that that is a very big component to, you know, the success we have had is we engage very personally with our audience um, from running our own online e-commerce store and shipping merchandise out, you know, instead of just sending people to iTunes, which we get a lot of revenue, obviously, from iTunes and Spotify and other sources, um, but we've really cultivated a relationship with our, our diehard fans through our own store. They buy direct from us. Now we know their name. We have their email address. We can communicate with them. Um, we know, you know many of our, our best customers we know by name. Uh, we see them on Facebook. We interact with them. And, uh, yeah, it's that, that personal extra touch that I think has really given us uh, a little edge. Yeah, and it's, it's, it goes back to what you said about being more of a family. So it's not just the people that you work with 
the bands that you sign it's it's the the fans the people that are streaming media or actually purchasing from your 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 store you, you don't get that with with a lot of labels you know you don't get that with a lot of like i said before with a lot of artists it's it's very um it is very family so which is really which is really good yeah i mean we've even taken it to the point of um you know we'll routinely a few times a year uh maybe you know once a quarter or so we'll get all of the artists on the roster and we'll do a, a group video Skype call. So we've got artists in, you know, US and Canada and Europe and uh, different places around the world. And instead of them all just kind of being off on their own little island, working on their own stuff, we have that sense of family where we'll bring the artists together. They can all meet each other. We're all talking, um, you know, talking about what we're struggling with or what were some of our big successes and, you know, kind of building each other up as a team. Oh, that's really cool. It's really cool. Over the years, you've you've kind of built this um, social media uh, mini empire, if you will. Um, but you've also, through your stores, um, sold other artists things aren't that aren't associated with fixed. Yeah, we did. You know, we we've kind of gone through an evolution uh, out and and returned back to form recently. Where um, again, kind of where the label started was with one artist with Celldweller, and we realized we had all these systems that we could scale and handle more artists. So we signed some artists to the label, um, but we we had a lot of bottlenecks in, in signing too many artists because we were still a very small team. And finding artists, you know, a and projects, getting things mixed and produced, uh, you know, takes a lot of time and resources. So at one point we realized, well, we've kind of got, um, you know, we have a sound, we have a style that we're known for. We do an electronic rock hybrid fusion. And so we knew other artists on other and other labels that were doing things in similar genres um, that, you know, they weren't signed with us. They're doing their own thing. Uh, like, well, we've got an audience base. Maybe we can kind of make a little marketplace, extend on our label store and just sell other artists and labels that would appeal to our audience. So we expanded for several years and had become, you know, a decent hub at uh, fixedstore.com, our, our online store, for, you know, a lot of electronic music, um, you know, industrial, electronic rock. Um, at one point, uh, when the EDM uh, explosion in the U.S. was really happening and dubstep was really happening at its height here several years ago, we, we boasted our store as the world's biggest EDM merch store. We had merch from Dead Mouse to... Porter Robinson and uh, I mean probably 50 artists with their brands of merch we were selling through the fixed store and there was no other store you could go to one outlet and find that many different artists where you could buy their merch so we kind of had a heyday of really selling other people's merch but that kind of started to die down the the EDM craze in the US although you know I'm sure a lot of people would say it's still going um, it did die down, and we saw that directly with our merch sales. Um, the sales started slowing down for a lot of these artists, and I think it got a little oversaturated with so many shows and festivals. And so then we started scaling back on some of the third-party stuff. And this past year, we uh, actually just in the past uh, six months or so, we completely eliminated all third-party content from our store, and we're now zero focused laser focused back on our own label our own content and uh what we do best cool no i was just i i noticed because I, I think i actually looked at the store when that was happening and that's where that's where i think my question came from on that front just by having that output with those other artists right obviously that obviously that helps the awareness of, of of fixed itself because if you're the only ones really selling that stuff that's better people are coming to right you know, so I, I didn't realize you'd stop doing that. Um, we did just recently, um, and and I, we're already seeing it pay off because we, you know, some of those things, like I said, had slowed down, but it really took a lot of our manpower, our resources, our time, attention, our focus off of our own content, and really at the end of the day, that's what's driving us forward. That's the the other stuff was just kind of a little extra, a little bonus, but. Um, actually 
when we analyzed it really closely, it was almost taking away from what we could have been doing if we were focusing more time and energy on our original content. Mm. So um, recently you switched it up. Um, I don't know how long ago actually it was. It was probably actually probably a couple of years ago, I think. But you started releasing um, like graphic novels or comic books. We've done it. Yeah, we, with Seldweller specifically, um, in his very grand creative vision, we have done a, uh, a an actual full-blown novel. So, you know, a several hundred page novel mm. with a whole rich uh, sci-fi story that kind of was a companion to an original score that he did to the album or to the novel. So they go together. Um, and that was called Black Star. And then his latest album, End of an Empire, is, you know, a big epic... Uh, futuristic sci-fi storyline as well. So the album uh, is companioned by a graphic comic. A uh, we did, you know, a, an entire hundred-page art book with concept art and behind-the-scenes content, photos of Clayton in the studio, um, and we just also released that album for the first time ever, having a Seldweller album on vinyl uh, as a double vinyl. So, yeah, we've really kind of expanded the merch offering for the diehard fans to give them, you know, really high-end, uh, high-quality content that they can enjoy having. How does, a, like, a book release compare to releasing music? Uh, is, it, is it more of the same? Because I've only got experience with, like, releasing music on that side. But having to, like, do that in a music-centric um, setting, how, how does that compare? Yeah, it's been... It's been interesting, and it's a little unique and different from music. Um, you know, distribution-wise, you know, we have the book available as an ebook, and you know, the iBook Store and Amazon Kindle Store, and all those places. Um, but this has really been, you know, with Black Star for Seldweller, you know, it's really still geared towards sell the Seldweller audience, the Seldweller fans, and you know, it has, it has started to kind of expand beyond that a little bit um but yeah it is new ground and you know i don't know that we've had so much success there yet that uh you know i have a a, a list that i could say specifically you know this is uh how that was done um you know I, we really just like a lot of things we do try new things and we're not sure you know the first time we go and try something new you know exactly how it's going to work um, but we like to push the envelope and expand into new territories and uh, and see what will work. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, that's cool. I was just wondering what if, if there are any major differences in releasing the product over the other product, really, because um, I like comic books. I go to the comic book store every couple of weeks, pick up, you know, various books and things. But no, I was just wondering in the, like, just sort of the way that works, because obviously there's still um, a lot of independent comic book stores as opposed to independent record stores. And obviously I know you sell things through your site. Right. And we have, we've done most of it, you know, direct to consumer through our site where, uh, where, where works, you know, the book, uh, physically is exclusively available through us. Um, you know, we haven't made the hard copy available anywhere else. So people are coming to us for it. the ebook we've put out, you know, in all the ebook stores, um, for, you know, digital distribution, um, but I would say, you know, the challenge with the book and the comic that we've done has really been on the art side with the comic. There's just so much art, so many panels of art, you know, uh, the story. And then the with the, the novel, editing and rereading the book and then editing and rewriting um, you know, we worked with, uh, you know, an award-winning author, Joshua Viola, Viola um, who has done the book The Bane of Yodo, which has won, like, 20-plus awards. He's done uh, some great work, and uh, we had him author the book for us, and you know, that was a, a whole new process, just seeing how that worked. Have you got plans for any more books? At the moment... Not currently, uh, although something that Clayton is getting more into uh, right now is into the film side. So he has been kind of brainstorming with a couple friends of his 
uh, writing some film ideas that they could maybe go on to get turned into, you know, feature films. Um, and he's also getting more involved on the film, more involved on the film score side. So he's actually about to do his first feature length film score, uh, where by himself, you know, he's putting together 60 plus minutes of music just, uh, for a film called the dunes cool so going into uh as we've just got into 2016 um what are the plans for fixed um this year yes we've got some exciting things on the year for 2016 we've got two new artists actually uh coming on board here in the first quarter that uh this will be one of the first places that it's publicly announced so uh, we've got a little inside uh, look at what's going on at Fix here. We've got a great artist, French artist, uh, who's uh, currently based in Germany called The Algorithm. Cool. And uh, Remy, the guy behind that project, has done uh, several previous albums. Uh, he's worked with a label called Basic Records before. And uh, he really fuses, you know, gritty, uh, genty. Uh, guitars uh, with, you know, IDM, glitch, drum and bass, just kind of really aggressive uh, multi-genre fusion. And his new album is called Brute Force, and that'll be out April 1st. Nice. Um, we'll have a single out actually here in the next couple of weeks. Cool. cool. Um, but we haven't announced that anywhere else yet. And then we have a previous guest that you've had on uh, the DJ Force X show, we just signed yesterday, as of when this is being recorded, uh, um, the, the the ink is now dry. Uh, <laughs> it's Seething Akira. Excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So they're uh, you know UK based, and uh, you know they've got uh, you know what's interesting about Seething Akira is this will be the first band that we've ever signed. So every other artist on our roster prior to them have been solo projects just one man band kind of things yeah um, so seeding cure is our first band and we're excited to uh bring them on board we'll be teaming them up with a producer named reese fulber who uh was part of frontline assembly back in the day he's worked with fear factory uh he's done work with the dreaming he has a project called conjure one nice. uh so uh, he's also done some mixing and producing for us with a few of the uh, existing fixed artists, Bustali, Voicians. Uh, so we're really excited that we're going to have him on board working with Seeding Akira on uh, a full-length album from them. Nice. I, I, that's really exciting because I love those guys. Um, they've been like in contact with me for a, quite a while now. And to actually hear that they're going to have their stuff released through a label that um, I respect on that front. And um, the fact... They're British as well, which is always good. Yeah. Um, and it's actually an opportunity to see, I, I haven't actually get to see them live yet. So, you know, they might come over here and play a few shows. So. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. And uh, Charlie says hello, by the way. He said, I told him that I'd be on and uh, he said to say hello. Yes, excellent. Yes, my redheaded friend. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's really awesome. The algorithm as well. Regular listeners to my radio show would have heard the algorithm um, played on the show, uh, mainly stuff from his previous album, Octopus 4, which was a really good album. And I look forward to hearing what he's going to come out with next. So yeah, the, the new album is probably a little more similar to the album he did before that one uh, called Polymorphic Code. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, he's going a little more back towards that sound. Um, but definitely still pushing some new ground as well. That's really cool. Really excited. So yeah, two, two kind of exclusives there. For, yeah. And then the show, so. outside of uh, the new artists coming on board, we've got, you know, a great roster. Uh, we've got Blue Stolly, Cell Dweller, Circle of Dust, which was Clayton's uh, original band in the 90s that got me into his music. He just got the rights back to five albums that mm -hmm. he did in the 90s that... Uh, He's been trying for 20 years now, basically, to get the rights back. Yeah. And uh, just about six months ago, we got the rights back. We're planning re-releases of all of his original material, remastered, uh, bonus tracks, a whole bunch of new fun stuff. In addition, he's going to do a new Circle of Dust album. Uh, so 10 or you know, 10 plus new songs from scratch. So Circle of Dust will be an active artist on the roster this year. 
Uh, we've got an L.A.-based composer, artist named uh, I Will Never Be the Same that we're really excited about, uh, a new album coming from him this year. Uh, we've got our uh, Canadian artist, Richie Nix, who does uh, electronic rock, hip-hop fusion. Yep. Um, we'll have more music coming from him. We've got uh, a side project of Clayton's called Scandroid that's kind of an 80s retro project. Uh, then uh, Seamless is another artist that we've actually got a release coming out here next week. Uh, he's got a, an EP called Wizard Bass, and uh, he's kind of best known for his FL Studio tutorials. He has a series on YouTube called How to Bass, and he's got like 90,000 plus subscribers to his tutorial series. Um, and then uh, our Germany-based artist, Voiceans, will also have new music coming out. We've got a a drum and bass single coming from him in just a few weeks as well. Cool. So Ooh. we've got quite a few artists, um, and we're really you know trying to make Fixed be the destination home of electronic rock for people that like that fusion, that hybrid crossover that uh, that you seem to be into, you know, on your radio show, and yeah. uh, you know the artists you're getting on this podcast. Um, you know, that's what we do, and what what we've kind of built is that home for that sound. No, that's really cool. It, it, it needs a home because it's kind of scattered. There's, there's bands here and there that, you know, people don't know how to market or how to push or where to put them. Um, and it's good actually having a place that understands that hybrid sound and, you know, we'll be able to push these artists in the right direction. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're just as excited to have them join the family because, you know, we're fans of this music, so we go out and look in the world, and there really isn't anybody else giving it a home. So so we're just building it here. Cool. So, I mean, on that, uh, any bands that might be listening, where can, can they submit demos to you? Yeah, we have uh, our, our label site, fixedonline.com. There's, uh, in the menu, there's a submission form that you can go to and submit, uh, you know, your links and info in. And, you know, we're always looking for new artists to work with. Um, and then, you know, our, if you want to check out our artists, our merch, fixedstore.com. Um, and then, you know, on social media, as far as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, we're just slash fixed music, cool. uh, all one word. Cool. Um, and I will mention, you know, in addition to our own website, our own store, uh, something that we've really been focusing on is Spotify. It is, you know, there's, there seems to be a lot of artists and labels have come out publicly kind of anti Spotify, but, um, it has really become our, our number one revenue source currently, as far as, you know, music revenue, mm. um, outside of the merch. And so we're doing really well on Spotify. We're huge fans. And, uh, you know, it's pretty impressive to go in there and look up, look up the artists and see, how many plays and how many listens, you know, these tracks are getting. And you know, we've got artists that are, you know, generating, you know, millions of listens on their songs. And, uh, and it's just great to see those numbers add up. Cool. Any bands listening, go to their website, submit your demos. You never know. <laughs> so, um, just a bit more about you yourself. Um, so what are your uh, favorite bands or, or albums? See, I might have to go the easy route and <laughs> because this, this is what I'm passionate about. So, you know, a lot of the fixed material that we've put out are some of my favorite releases. Uh, so I would have to say, you know, the debut Seldweller album from 2003, um, the debut Blue Stolly album, which is self-titled. Um, you know, those are those two records have been, you know, extremely uh, a big part of my life. Um, you know, looking out at some external artists that I've really enjoyed, you know, I probably, you know, say anything from uh, here, I'm going to cheat and pull up, uh, pull up my Spotify list, <laughs> you know, I mean, everything from pendulum to, uh, the dreaming, man, that's such a, that's such a hard question to answer. <laughs> You know, I've really been enjoying the new Bring Me the Horizon album. Yeah. Uh, that album is just so great. Yeah, you know, I, I do stick within, you know, the hybrid electronic rock. You know, the artists that are doing that well definitely, you know, are at the top of my list. You know, The Chemists, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. Excited about the new record they have coming up. Yeah, so there, I mean, there's a couple, I guess. All right, cool. Thank you. And what are your hobbies away from that? What do you do to unwind or, you know, just get away from it for a short time? 
Sure. I'm a runner, so I like to, weather permitting, it's a bit cold here and icy and snowy, so I'm, I'm not quite that dedicated, but I really like to go run. So, uh, you know, I just, I did my first half marathon this past year, uh, so 13.2 miles, and, uh, you know, that was the, the longest I pushed myself. But just being able to throw headphones on, you know, put on some good music, zone out, uh, get some good exercise and go for a run. You know, it's probably one of the biggest de-stressors that uh, that I enjoy. Um, but I'm also into, I'm really into good movies, sci-fi. Uh, I really like finding, you know, good TV shows to get sucked into where you can go on to uh, Netflix or HBO and kind of binge watch the whole season. House of Cards, just watched The Brink from HBO, which is great. And then, you know, I really love reading, so... A lot of business books, Seth Godin, one of my favorite authors, and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, develop and just grow listening to podcasts and, and learn about other people that are doing interesting things out in the world. Cool. Cool. And um, a couple of your favorite movies, I know you mentioned a couple of TV shows there. Any of your favorite movies? Anything you want to recommend? Definitely a Star Wars fan. Loved the new film, so you know that goes without speaking. Almost, you know, definitely sci-fi. So the Alien films are, are one of my favorite uh, series. Yeah. yeah, that's another one of those questions where there's so many, it's hard for me to pick <laughs> be the top ones. But uh, there's a couple, I guess. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, James. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And yeah. Yeah, good luck with the label. Good luck with uh, Seething Akira and the algorithm as well, being your new signings. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no worries. It's been my pleasure. Have a good rest of your day, man. Great. And maybe I can get you some new tunes from some of these artists to play on the show soon. Yes, definitely. Send them my way. We'll get them on there. Awesome. Cool, man. All right. Thanks, Barnaby. And have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. So there we have it. We come to the end of this particular episode of the DJ Force X podcast, proudly sponsored by Fixed. Uh, go on there, fixedstore.com. That's F I X T S T O R E dot com. Take a look at their artists, get their label sampler for a dollar. And if you dig any of them, why not buy something? Use my discount code uh, Force X, F O R C E X, and get 10% off. Um, so yeah, it's great having my first sponsor as this particular label because it is a particular genre I am passionate about. Uh, I grew up on a mixture of of, of metal and electronic music um, from far back as the early Prodigy, the What Evil Lurks EP, the Experience album, the Chemical Brothers, uh, Underworld, Dub No Bass of My Head Man, Second Toughest in the Infants albums. Fantastic. I'm listening to them again now, the remastered versions. And it's just brilliant. It brings back lots of memories, but it's just great sort of dance music. And obviously metal. I was into like, you know, Guns N' Roses and Iron Maiden and Deftones and Korn and all that kind of stuff growing up. But having those two genres just sort of collide in, in one home at Fixed is fantastic. Um, but yeah, uh, if you can rate and review the show, uh, that would be great on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you get this show from. Um, just log in on iTunes, go to the page and it's got an area. Do you want to review it? I've got a couple down there already. Uh, DJ hallucinate and, um, uh, Jen from, um, oh, the, yeah, Jen from fine, fine Titans, Jen from fine, fine Titans left a review on there, which was fantastic. So I want to thank her. Um, but yeah, anyone listening, please go do that. It really does help. Just, just raise the profile of the show and uh you know get the downloads up get more guests on make it more regular uh because i'd like to make this weekly i've tried um but just time constraints and everything because um i don't have much time um to do it but when i do do it i try and get it you know right uh but yeah it just just i'd like to make it more regular and make it a bit more um so i can produce these these podcasts and 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 help these artists thrive um but another previous my first guest on this show was david from calling all astronauts and they've got a new album due out um i was going to give it a shout out here i got sent the promo uh the other day and um it's good it's kind of a electro rock kind of 80s feel to it 
Um, but it's cool. The tracks I've heard so far, there's been a couple of tracks on my show already, like Empire, Hands Up Who Wants to Die. Um, but they've got an 11-track album coming out on the 11th of March via Supersonic Media. Um, go check them out. Um, if you like that kind of like uh, Depeche mode kind of um, sound um, mixed with some more like up-to-date electronics, uh, drum and bass, house, trap, all that kind of stuff. Um, but with guitars and a punk attitude and stuff like, yeah, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, go check them out anyway. They got tracks up and out, but their new album, March the 11th, Algorithm new album, April called Brute Force. Seething Akira going to have an album at some point this year. Um, so yeah, just, just keep an eye out for these artists. They're all fantastic. I love it all. I love music. Uh, <laughs> so, rambling i apologize but yes go rate review thank you for downloading the show i really do appreciate it i see the activities on my statistics pages um but i just want to know that you're listening and you're hearing me go rate and review the show go use my download code on the on the fixed website it just kind of lets me know what people are into where i'm where i can guide other interviews you know particular genres that most of the people are interested in or even just introducing you to something you've never heard before um that'll be fantastic and i'm hoping to get a few more bands i've got another one coming up in a couple of weeks um another interview that is so that'll be out um i'm lining up bands at the moment so if you're in a band you've got something coming out or you just want to chat give me a shout info at djforcex.com uh, i'm on twitter at djforcex i'm on facebook dot com forward slash dj force x um all i reply to messages on there uh leave you know leave me a message drop me an email whatever you want to do if you fancy a chat just want to get in touch with me for some reason do that because i've got the radio show so if you've got some music hit me up with the music it does fall into that kind of hybrid uh metal electronic sound um but i do if if it's got that kind of element to it i will try and play i played some bands on there before that don't strictly fit into that but i'm willing to try anything if if it's got a good vibe to it um but yeah hit me up be awesome so yes i'll have another one in a couple of weeks so until then this is dj force x out Thank you.